Thinking in English now has a Patreon. If you love listening to my podcast and you want to help and support my efforts, please consider subscribing. But why should you join? Well, conversation clubs twice a week where you can practice talking with other learners and native ESL tutors. Bonus episodes, one-on-one -on -one classes with myself and much more. Click the link in the description or head over to patreon.com forward slash thinking in English to subscribe today. Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson and welcome to the Thinking in English podcast, a podcast for intermediate to advanced level English learners. There is no such thing as a fish. Fish don't exist. You might not believe me right now, but by the end of this episode, I'm confident you will understand and maybe even agree with my opinion. Let's learn some biological English vocabulary while trying to understand the question, do fish actually exist? Head over to the Thinking in English blog for a full transcript of today's episode Take a look at my Instagram page, Thinking in English Podcast, for more content. And leave a like, a rating, a review, or a follow, wherever you are listening right now. Here is today's vocabulary list. As always, the written list is available in the description of the podcast and also on my blog, thinkinginenglish.blog. Vertebrate vertebrate. A vertebrate is an animal that has a spine. For example, cows, frogs and ostriches are all vertebrates. Cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. Cold-blooded animals can only control their body heat by taking in heat from the outside or by being active. As in, Snakes and lizards are cold-blooded animals. Limbless. Limbless. Having no limbs, so no arms, no legs or no wings. As in, snakes are limbless reptiles. Common ancestor. Common ancestor. One species, which is the ancestor, of two or more species later in time. For example, humans and gorillas share a common ancestor. To evolve. To evolve. To develop gradually. For example, dogs evolved from wolves. Descendant. Descendant. An animal that lives after and is related to another animal that lived in the past. For example, lemurs are descendants of early primates. To distinguish. To distinguish. To notice or understand the difference between two things. As in, it's really difficult to distinguish between these two species. And characteristic, characteristic, a typical or noticeable quality of someone or something. For instance, a squashed face is an unfortunate characteristic of pugs. Mammals exist. They are warm-blooded vertebrate animals that usually feed their young with milk and give birth to live babies. We are mammals. So are elephants, mice, dolphins and tigers. I'm sure you've seen a bird before. They are warm-blooded vertebrate animals that lay eggs, have feathers and a beak, and often they can fly. Ostriches, canaries, pigeons and eagles. They are definitely birds, and they definitely exist. How about amphibians? These are cold-blooded vertebrate animals that live fully in water when young 
and then go then undergo a transformation as adults, where they live mainly on land and breathe through lungs. Frogs, newts, toads, and salamanders. And they all certainly exist. So mammals exist, birds exist, amphibians exist, and I'm pretty sure that other types of animals like reptiles also exist. But what about fish? Do fish exist? I'm sure you read the title of today's episode and maybe you thought I must have made a mistake or a typo. There is no such thing as a fish. That must be wrong, right? Well, according to a group of scientists, it's a factual statement. There is actually no such thing as a fish. The definitions I gave earlier for mammals, amphibians and birds were just the first result when I searched those words on Google. So I'll do the same for fish. According to the Google definition, which I think comes from the Oxford Dictionary, a fish is a limbless, cold-blooded vertebrate animal with gills and fins living wholly in water. In other words, a cold-blooded animal with bones that lives and breathes underwater. This sounds like a nice definition of a fish to me, and in this category we could include sharks, tuna, salmon, anglerfish, lungfish and clownfish. They are all cold-blooded, they all live underwater, and they all have bones, so they must all be fish. Where is the problem? Well, the problem is that these animals are not actually that closely related. In fact, the lungfish is more closely related to a cow than it is to a salmon. You heard me right. The lungfish, which lives underwater and has cold blood, is closer to the warm-blooded land-living cow than to salmon. Let me try to explain. But first, we're going to need to have a brief lesson in taxonomy to understand this. I'm not a scientist, and I'm sure there are a few scientists or doctors listening right now, so I apologise if I make a mistake. Taxonomy, in a nutshell, is how we categorise all living things. It is sometimes described as the tree of life. It's based on the idea of a common ancestor. The concept that a wide that today's wide range of diverse animals are descended from one living creature that lived millions of years ago. All mammals, for example, are thought to have one common ancestor. This tree of life is separated into different categories. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. These are complicated words. So I'll include a picture or an image on the blog to help you understand. So to help you understand, go look at the transcript. But let's try to think about it with our own species, the human. Our kingdom is Animalia, like every single animal on the planet. Our class is Mammalia, like all other mammals. We're warm-blooded and we have a spine and we produce milk for our young. Our order is primates, along with monkeys, apes and lemurs. And our species is Homo sapien. The reason these classifications are accepted by scientists is that they indicate where animals evolved from. Fish, however, do not all have the same common ancestors. There is an incredibly amount there is an incredible amount of diversity in our oceans, lakes and rivers. And animals have been living in the oceans for significantly longer than life has existed outside of the ocean. One amazing fact to illustrate this point is that sharks are older than trees. The earliest shark fossils we have date from around 450 million years ago. The oldest evidence of trees dates back to around 360 million years ago. Sharks, 
or the descendants of modern sharks, or the descendants of ancient sharks, I should say, are probably 90 million years older than trees, and 200 million years older than dinosaurs. These numbers are so large, it is hard for us to understand. Life has existed in the oceans for an incredibly long time, and during this time, there have been various different evolutions and splits in the tree of life. Mammals, birds, reptiles, all of these evolved from something we would call a fish. All life started in the water. We are able to distinguish between different types of animals because of their appearance and physical characteristics. But under the ocean, there is just as much biological diversity. I mentioned the lungfish earlier. Lungfish are a type of animal that live in fresh water. And if you look at them, they appear to be a fish. Right? They fit all of the characteristics of fish. However, lungfish can breathe air and have a kind of lung. The lungfish are quite an important fish for us. They are the closest living relative to all amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. We, humans, share a common ancestor with lungfish around 390 million years ago. And this is why we say that lungfish are closer to cows than salmon. Both cows and lungfish evolved from an animal which had lungs. Salmon never had lungs. Therefore, lungfish and cows have a common ancestor closer than lungfish and salmon do. But does any of this matter? Right? Does it matter what I'm saying? Well, classifying and categorizing animals is something that humans love to do. When I said there is no such thing as a fish, I wasn't suggesting that sharks, salmon and lungfish don't exist. Instead, I used the phrase to highlight how limited, and perhaps even pointless, the term fish is. If we consider lungfish and salmon to both be fish, then from an evolutionary perspective, humans, frogs, ostriches and lizards are also fish. And of course, we are not fish. Actually, the term fish might only be useless to scientists. It is probably quite useful for fishermen and fishmongers, people who work with fish and sell fish as part of their jobs. They probably care more about the appearance and the taste of an animal than where it evolved from, which, or which other animal it is related to. But organising animals based on appearance is not necessarily the best system. In fact, it's a terrible system. It's not based on science or evidence, but on human judgment. Just because we think a tuna, a shark, a clownfish and a lungfish resemble each other, doesn't mean they are the same thing. So here is today's final thought. One of the reasons I wanted to make this episode is to demonstrate the limitations of language. Our word fish, which I'm pretty sure has an equivalent in every language, seems like a perfectly acceptable word. But it completely ignores the incredible diversity of life in the ocean. The category fish, from an evolutionary perspective, is useless. Not all fish are closely related. Millions of years of evolution has created different branches of the tree of life. Actually, tree of life is a strange choice here, considering that some fish are millions of years older than trees. I'm not suggesting you stop using the word fish. Right, It's a very useful word in restaurants and the supermarket. But I do suggest you think twice about the categories and definitions that we use in our daily lives. So what do you think? Do we need some new words to describe fish? Are you surprised that a lungfish 
is more related to you than it is to a salmon. What is an unbelievable fact that you know? Let me know your answers to these questions or your opinions on this topic by leaving a comment on the Thinking in English blog, a comment on the Spotify page, or message me on Instagram. You can also follow me over on Instagram, Thinking in English podcast, where I release lots of content and pictures from my personal life as well. Uh, if you enjoy listening to Thinking in English, please consider leaving a like, a rating, a follow, or, or a review wherever you are listening right now. Um, as I'm recording this episode, we're very close to 2,000, 2000 ratings on Spotify. We might even be there by now. So please give me a five-star rating on Spotify. I'd appreciate it so much. And if you really, really enjoy listening to me, uh, please consider supporting me by uh, creating a Patreon subscriber account and contributing some money to help Thinking in English keep going. In return for a monthly donation, you will get access to conversation clubs, um, bonus episodes, potentially one-on-one -on -one classes with myself, yeah, lots of great things. So that's patreon.com forward slash thinking in English. Uh, but if you don't want to sign up, that's okay. Just recommend my podcast to five friends. That's all I ask. Um, but anyway, thank you for listening. And I will speak to you next time.